Welcome to this short training video on the DSL 8001 patient monitor. So I'm going to run through some of the user keys and various functions within the DSL 8001 monitor, which will, will then enable you to be able to use it. I'm going to show you where to plug the accessories in. So if we just turn the monitor round, so you can see the side area you can see that we have the ECG saturation probe non-invasive blood pressure cables all plugged in temperature goes in here just at the front to remove any of these cables you just pinch and pull so you can see just at the side there there's two little buttons so you pinch at the side and pull. The cables are all colour coded so you can see that this one is orange and it goes into the orange blood pressure port. They're also labelled so can you see that says non-invasive blood pressure on it and to put it in you literally just push it in and it's the same for the ECG you can see that's labelled ECG and it's also colour coded as well so literally just pull out and push in to turn off I'm going to press and hold turn on press for two seconds and you'll see it will turn on Down the side, so you've got some fixed user keys. So the very top button, the alarm silence, will silence a parameter specific alarm for one minute. We'll just demonstrate that. So I'm going to set an alarm off so we can see what happens when the monitor alarms. So we see that we've got an arrhythmia on the screen. As soon as the monitor picks that up, it's going to highlight the parameter in red it will tell you down here that we've got an alarm condition, in this case upper heart rate alarm and it's also going to flash red at the top here. If I press the alarm silence button it will then silence that alarm for one minute. Below that we've got our non-invasive blood pressure start stop button. So here on the screen is where you'll find your non-invasive blood pressure measurement, the last measurement that was done. If I wanted to do another one, just press the go button and I don't know if you can hear the cuff inflating, you'll see the cuff pressures rising and if I need to stop it halfway through I can pr just press and stop that. So it's non-invasive blood pressure start stop button. Below that is the blood pressure auto setup. So if I press that button, you can see on screen here, we've got a choice of continuous blood pressures or one minutely up to 120 minutes of two hour blood pressures. The highlighted blue in the middle means it's off. And in order to change that, all I need to do is move my jog dial in the bottom right hand corner here but if you can see that highlighting in blue so I can select for example every five minutes and then if I press the blue go button it will do one straight away and then continue every five minutes or I can if I finish doing that I can then turn that back off so just by moving my jog dial round and back off and select so I'm pressing the jog dial to select the jog dial is how you navigate your way around the screen other than the fixed keys here. So I've just moved that once, see the return button there and press and it will then close that window down. Equally, I've got my home key right underneath. If I press the home key, that will clear whatever's on the screen for me. So no matter what windows or menus I have open, I can get back to my monitoring screen quickly by pressing that home key. 
Just below that is my menu key. So within my menu key, I can do all sorts of patient setup, alarm setup, sound setup functions. And we'll come back and work our way through that in just a moment. So just use the home key there to clear that. And as I said, the jog dial allows me to navigate my way around the screen. So you press to activate it. And then as you can see, you see in white here, it's currently around the SPO2 display. Now on the NIBP, on the RESP, on the temp, moving along the bottom. If you can see that clearly on the video, highlighting each area and function within the monitor. So we'll have a little look at some of those as well. So starting at this end, so the very corner here, this little person is the class of patient. I'll show you where to change that in a moment. So at the moment it's in adult mode, we can change it into child and neonate mode as well. If I move this little indicator along, just here and press to select this is where I change my upper and lower alarm limits for my patient or turn them off so if it's appropriate to do so I can turn off or on you can see that in the top right hand corner there off or on just by pressing if I move my jog dial slightly I can now change my upper limits so again, can you see that altering? So I've gone from 120 up to 140 and back down again to 120 and press to accept. Moving down, so can you see that? It's moving down and I can now change my lower limits. So I'm going to change those there and press to accept. Okay. And then I can move my way along just by constantly turning that jog dial and settling on whatever I want to change. So we're now up on the, the sats there. Move it down one. I don't want to change the upper level, but I may want to change the lower level. So I'm going to turn that up slightly. So I want it to alarm at 92. So hopefully that gives you the idea of how to go ahead and change every single one of your upper or lower alarm limits. Okay, so I'm gonna press the home key to get rid of that. And then back down into this lower section here. So the little spanner is a maintenance area or your menu again. Okay, home key, we'll come back. This section here, see that's highlighted this will allow me to swap between my displays so at the moment I've got my numerics down the right hand side here and then my waveforms across my monitor if I press you can see what's happened so now I've just got one waveform and bigger numbers on my display so I can choose and toggle between either of those displays and then moving again one more so we're just here and this is now my trends so I can choose to look at and view all of my observation trends here and I can go in to the trends area can you see my little arrow keys here I can move up or down with those trends I can choose what I want to display so I have a choice of standard, which brings up my observations. I've got my heart rate and pulse rate, SpO2, non-invasive blood pressure, my resps and my temperature if I'm monitoring that. So back to my choice and I was on my NIBP, I can look into alarms so I can look at anything that's alarmed so again it just shows you different views of various trends depending on how you want to view your data and your information that's being collected in the monitor there 
moving along you can see here we've got the time on the monitor so that will display the time and then down the side we've got our various parameters displays alarm limits in the corner these could be in a bar graph form or numerics as they are on here and obviously our waveform display in the middle there I can go into each parameter menu as well just by touching so here I can change my main monitoring leads like here so I've got a choice of all the various leads that are plugged in so two is standard but I can change to any other that I choose I can change the size of my waveform so if you look at the waveform there I can alter it so I could increase it or decrease it I can choose to turn my heart rate alarms off again if it's appropriate to do so and I would do that here I can choose to have them off or on moving my parameters down into my SPO2 and again you can see it's very similar setup so I can set my alarms on or off I can choose to whether it will alarm or not when it's measuring the blood pressure and again alarm limit is set up so it's a little more simple as you go through again looking at the NIBP in here again just picking out some of the main things that you might want to use so alarm limit is set up at the bottom respirate set up again I can choose to have it on or off so if I choose to take that off it won't measure my respirate any longer or on again I can choose the size of my waveform like I could with my ECG I can choose whether I want the alarm on or off so those are the main the main things that you can see with your parameters so back into the menu area now if I wanted to set my class of patient for example patient setup and then I've got patient classification if I select adult child and neonate so I can choose which of those I want to set equally if I wanted to set my pacemaker to on I can do that by coming to pacemaker and setting that to on or off it will default to off you can turn it on if you need to if I want to temporarily suspend monitoring select and then press yes and now my monitoring has been suspended so if I was taking my patient off to x-ray or scan or letting them get up to use the bathroom then this is the time you might want to suspend monitoring and then press resume and I'm straight back into monitoring night mode so night mode, I don't know if you notice, will slightly darken the screen there. It will quieten my alarms and it tells me at the bottom here that my night mode is active. To discharge my patient, again it will double check with me, do I want to discharge my patient? All the data will be erased when I select yes there. So if I say yes, then all of that da data that's saved, all my trends, uh, any blood pressures etc will all be deleted out of the monitor most of the things below will all be set up for you so you shouldn't really need to go in and change any of these things but just to show you what will be set up so for example if you wanted the beep beep tone on can you hear that I can turn that on varying volumes or obviously turn it off if I don't want that beeping equally I can change my volumes so if I wanted my monitor to alarm much more loudly I can turn that up you see there it's gone up to an 8 or if I don't want it alarming quite as loud so that's the end of the short training session on the DS8001 bedside monitor. I hope that it's been useful for you. If we can offer you any further help or assistance, please contact your clinical support specialist on either telephone 01483 
728065 or you can email training at fakuda.co.uk